So in this chapter we are going to learn about laboratory diagnosis which includes microscopy, culture media, antimicrobial susceptibility, testing. So it is a huge topic. So let us dive into the topic. Laboratory diagnosis. Okay, this is our heading, laboratory diagnosis. So, firstly, we are dealing with the introduction into laboratory diagnosis. We have to know how to manage when we get a patient and how to diagnose the infection. Okay, so first what we do is in, in the introduction part, first what we do when we get a patient is that firstly we collect specimen. Okay. First one is the collect specimen. Okay, so collect specimens can be from blood, can be mucus, can be urine, fecus, can be CSF, okay, so can be corneal scrap, okay, so there are many types of collection method of the specimen. So first one is the collection specimen. So one thing you have had to know in the collection of the specimen here is that some specimens uh, can be collected without any media uh, and can be transported into the lab but some specimen we need a transport media in order to preserve the uh, specimen for a long time while uh, we do the uh, investigation it might take a long time and also while we transport it might take a long time so we do transport media for some specimens so let us dive into transport media So you see some specimens, specimens like CSF, body fluid, or ocular, ocular specimen, tissue and bond specimen. Such specimens need to be transported immediately. So we have to immediate transport. This have to immediate transport. These specimens need immediate transport. I mean less than 50 minutes. Within less than 50 minutes, we have to transport into the lab for the diagnosis. Okay. Then there are certain media like urine. In urine, we can transport it into uh, our, our lab within two hours okay if it take more than two hours then we have to add preservative like boric acid then we can transport within 24 hours then there is stool stool is also we can transport within one hour and if it takes more than one hour, then we have to add preservatives like carry blair. Carry blair media. Then we can transport within 24 hours. Okay. Then there are certain specimens like anaerobic culture. Some organisms need anaerobic conditions, so such culture we have to transport under anaerobic culture media. So, so for we use media like Robert Robertson Robertson cooked meat broth media. Okay, Robertson cooked meat broth media. And we can also use any other special culture medias for anaerobic culture. Okay. Then there is uh, some like a corneal scrapping. If we take a corneal scrapping from a patient, we have to plate it from the patient side itself. Okay. Should be plated immediately. We do it on blood agar or on chocolate agar. 
okay if it was a corneal scraping from a patient we have to do it as bedside okay bedside from the bedside itself we have to scrap those corneal scraps should be immediately plated on a blood agar that means nothing new the scrapper should be plated on a blood agar or a chocolate agar immediately on the bedside of the patient so these are some example for the transport medias so first we collect the specimen then we have to identify the second step in the laboratory diagnosis is identification okay second one is identification so in identification techniques there are many methods uh, like uh, there are mainly three types of identification techniques in microbiology practice these are firstly after specimen collection we have to identify which organism is it so basically we have three method for that first one is the molecular method sorry first one is our routine method our normal method most of the specimens we do routine method okay then there is molecular method then there is our immunological method or also called as serological So these are the three main types of identification techniques. Immunological or serological methods we detail this study in immunology. So what happens here is that in routine method what we do is that when we get a specimen firstly we do microscopy. Okay. We do microscopy. Gram stain, acid first chains etc. After microscopy what ha microscopy helps in you see microscopy helps in to choose um, help in firstly to choose our culture media in which culture media we should cultivate the microorganism to choose culture media also it helps in preliminary identification what do you mean by preliminary identification is that in routine method we can identify whether the organism is a fungi or a bacteria okay also if it was a bacteria sometimes we can demonstrate motility so from microscopy itself we can conclude to a certain strain of bacteria okay so we can identify whether it was a fungi or bacteria that is it helps in preliminary identifications okay so after microscopy uh, what we choose is that we have to choose a culture media in order to okay then we use culture culture in culture media here what we do is that we isolate organism and multiplicate it so we can detail this study about it okay so the first method in routine culture is microscopy then we do culture then we do at last we identify what organism is it okay so for example uh, in a routine method we only use in the case of bacteria and fungi because you see parasites cannot be cultured okay in a, they require a large media so in normal petri dish we cannot culture a parasite also viruses are also uh, non microscopic so basically we cannot identify uh, parasites and uh, virus under routine culture so routine culture is mostly used for bacteria and fungi whereas molecular and immunological method is commonly used for virus and parasites okay so what happens here is that in routine culture after microscopy we do culture then we identify for example if it was a bacteria then we do biochemical reaction to identify what type of bacteria is it we do biochemical reaction and if it was a fungi we use a chain okay for example if gram chain we can do gram staining or lpcb
LPCB is nothing but lactose phenol cotton blue. Cotton blue stain, okay. If it was gram positive, that means it is a yeast type, yeast type fungi. And if it was LPCB, then it is a mold type. So by this method, uh, by staining, we can identify fungi by gram staining. If it was gram stain positive, then it is yeast type. Then LPCB, that is lactose phenol cotton blue stain positive, then it is a mold type fungi. Okay. Uh, to identify bacteria, we do biochemical reactions. So these are the methods under routine methods. Okay, first we do microscopy. In microscopy itself, we can demonstrate to what type it is, whether it was a fungi or bacteria, whether it is a mortal, whether it is sporulated or non-sporulated, it has a so uh, dricus, uh, okay, flagellate is a flagellated or non-flagellated. So something like that we can identify in microscopy. Then we do culture for isolation and multiplication of that pathogenic organism. And after that we identify. If it was a bacteria, we do biochemical reaction. And if it was a fungi, we can do gram staining and LPCB stains. Okay. So these are the methods under routine culture to identify an organism in microbiology lab practice. Then there is molecular method. In molecular method, what we do is we detect gene here. Okay, we detect gene. Gene can be detected by PCR. Okay, PCR, RT-PCR, real-time PCR. So some by this technique, we can identify by, by molecular method. We detect the gene of the pathologic organism. Okay, then there is immunological method or serological methods. For example, in immunological method is our ELISA wheel Felix method, wheel Felix reaction, wheel Felix reaction is in which type of rickets here, okay? Then there is our Vidal test, Vidal test in our endro fever. Okay, these are some examples for uh, immunological or serological methods we detail this study in immunology okay so what we do here is that we detect in molecular method we detect gene and in immunological method we detect antigen or antibody okay antibody in patient antigen in organism okay by in immunological method we detect antigen or antibody in molecular method we detect gene for the causage, causing uh, disease and uh, in routine method we identify the organism by biochemical reactions or gram staining method so these are the identification process so after collection then identification then the third method then the third procedure in the laboratory investigation is and other than our antimicrobial susceptibility testing known as AST so what do you mean by antimicrobial susceptibility testing here we detect the susceptibility of whether the organism is resistant or susceptible to an antibiotics so that is by antimicrobial susceptibility test okay so antimicrobial susceptibility tests are of two types they can be phenotypic and also they can be genotypic so phenotypic AST is the most commonly used here not most commonly used and genotypic AST is not that much uh, commonly used, but phenotypic AST is the most commonly used antimicrobial susceptibility test. Okay, so AST is a under topic. We will be dealing about it later detailedly. Okay, so for some example for phenotypic AST is our well, E test. Then there is our disc diffusion test, famous disc diffusion.
okay these are for some example for phenotypic ast then there is genotypic ast so genotypic ast is usually done in organism in which we cannot culture okay so for example our mycoplasma mycobacteria mycobacteria our mycobacteria takes long time in culture about 2 to 3 months it takes about 2 to 3 months to cultivate mycobacteria in a culture media so it's a long time so what we do here is that we directly detect the genes which are present for which is a, a reason, which is a reason for antimicrobial susceptibility okay so in mycobacteria there is a gene called we detect a gene called RPO B gene. Okay, there is a gene called RPO B gene. So if this RPO B gene is present, if it was positive, then it is sensitive. Sensitive towards what rifampicin. Okay, rifampicin is the antibiotics we use in mycobacterial infection. And if the uh, gene is absent, if the gene in mycobacteria, RPOB gene, RPOB gene is absent in mycobacteria, then it is resistant. Resistant towards rifampicin. Okay. So, this is one of the examples for genotypic AST, which is not most commonly used because it takes long time. Uh, it is highly costly also uh, but in case of mycobacteria it takes a long time to cultivate mycobacteria in a culture media so we use genotypic AST in mycobacteria but in rust many in other many microorganisms we use phenotypic AST like uh, e test and disk diffusion methods okay antimicrobial susceptibility test is a test to detect whether a microorganism is susceptible towards a antibiotic or not okay so these are the general introduction to the laboratory diagnostic part then we have to detail study about microscopy uh, culture media culture methods and then antimicrobial susceptibility testing etc and molecular methods etc okay see you in the next chapter